Well, a lot of us are used to working with server and having the ability to actually, you know, join a server to a domain, for example, modify and change some of its configurations. In server core, it's a little bit different. Let's take a look at how you'd have to go through that process if you're actually starting from scratch installing a server core machine. So the first thing I'm going to do here is on the installation, I'm going to accept the default languages and click next. I'm going to choose to install now. Now once I do this, obviously it'll come up with and give me the opportunity to make that choice. But this time I'm going to actually choose to install a server core machine. Now your choice would be a standard or a data center edition. It depends on whether you, you want or need some of those extra capabilities. For example, if this core machine was going to host a lot of virtual machines, maybe I would, and I had a license for it, I might want to choose data center edition since it has the ability to have an unlimited number of VMs on it. So we'll go ahead and choose the 2016 data center. Notice it doesn't say server core next to it. That's more of, of a name that we used to use with the old 2012-2012 R2. But it's lacking the desktop experience, and that's what we're going to install. So we'll click next here. Then we will accept the end user license agreement here. And we'll go ahead and choose that custom install, and we'll install it right here on this operating system on that disk. So it's going to go start copying the Windows files. After it does all of that, it'll get the files ready and, and, and get, us, get us to a position. We're ready to start configuring our server core environment. Once the installation is completed and it's rebooted the machine probably a couple of times, you'll actually wind up being prompted at a command prompt to enter a password. So it says here, the user password must be changed before signing in, so click OK. So I'll just hit the Enter key on OK. I'll type in the password we want to use. Hit the Enter key there. Tab down to go to the, pass, the, the next field. And confirm that. It's changing the administrator password there. It's just letting me know that it has been changed. And just like that, it's going to go through and set us up. Now what you'll note here is I'm actually sitting at just a command prompt, right? That's server core. There is no GUI. So I'm actually logged into this machine now, ready to start working. And all I've got is a command prompt. Typically, with server core, you're going to want to administer it remotely. Now, in order to do that, you have to allow remote management. You're going to probably want to join it to your domain and configure a few other settings on the system. So let's take a quick look at some of the things that you can actually do. Now, we could do that from a command prompt using PowerShell. But one of the nice things they actually do with server core is they've created a menu system called the sconfig system to help with all of those configuration settings. So I'm just going to go in here and type sconfig and enter and you'll see a menu comes up, right? It's actually looked at the entire system now, and I have the ability to go out there and look at, let's say for right now, let's just look at our network settings and see if we actually are getting IP or not. So we'll go out there and see if we're getting an IP address. And sure enough, I can see I'm getting a 169.254.132.153, so you know that's an APIPA address, which means right now this machine is not even getting a DHCP address out there, right? So if I wanted to go out there and assign it one, Let's say we'd go in and set up a, a, a network adapter. We can set, you know, choose one here. And we'll go out there and let's say we'll, we'll set up a static IP on this machine. Uh, we'll put it at 172.16.0.20, let's say. Give it a subnet mask of 255.255.0.0. Right, and the default gateway 172.16.0.1. So we'll go out there and we'll set that up. So I've now got that set up. Now I need some, some way of get, getting uh, DNS name resolution. So we'll go to number two there, right? And I'll put in the 172.16.0.10 for DNS and we'll hit the enter key there. So preferred DNS server is now set. I'm not gonna worry about setting an alternative. So now it's showing me all of my network configurations. So the sconfig gives me that ability. Now I can go to number four here. And if the next thing I want to do, let's say I wanted to go out there and change the computer name, I could choose number two here. Uh, new computer name, let's call this one Server 2 Core. Right, so this is our Server 2 Core machine. This is how we have to restart uh, to actually go out there and do that. We'll say no to that for right now. As you can see, the next step would be if you wanted to join this to a domain, I could choose number one and go in there and provide the credentials appropriate to join it to the domain and so on. So there's a lot of configuration that you don't actually have to do from a command line because you get the ability to use the sconfig or the server configuration wizard to actually set it up on a server core machine.